this is a photograph of my great grandmother, my uh, granddad Charlie Ellis's mother. I can see the likeness very much, and, and in fact, I can see my mother in her. It, it's the nose. Barbara doesn't know her great grandmother's name, so she needs to look up the 1881 census. But she has to enlist the help of husband Scott, as she's never used a computer in her life. He was born 1877. Okay, and where was he born? Uh, oh, Bethnal Green. Okay. View record. <gasps> Mal Bethnal Green. Street yeah. address 59 Old, Old Nichols Street. Street. Yeah. Okay. Ellis. Charles, Fee that Fee Ch That looks like Phoebe. Is that Phoebe, Phoebe Ellis? Phoebe Ellis, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Phoebe So Ellis. would that be his, his, his mother, do you reckon? Son. Well, that can't be Phoebe. Charles. Yeah. What's the D.O. afterwards? <laughs> it's not Phoebe, it's Charles. Doe. Charles Doe, William, William Doe. Doe. Sorry. Son. Sorry, yeah. Why, how come they took... I mean, if Hold Mary's on, name's Doe... Well, there's so was that, is her, yeah. Maybe that was her maiden Ellis. name. Hold on. No, no. No. Oh, it's not Doe, is it? It's Ditto. <laughs> We'll erase the family name the, of Doe. The, <laughs> <laughs> OK. Right, OK, fine. So we still don't know what his mother was called, right? <laughs> We're, We're clueless, toes, aren't we? <laughs> no, we're doing well, darling. Elizabeth Doe. So there's Charles Ellis. Yeah. And then his wife, look. Mary. Mary. So age then, 26, is that? Yeah, it looks. Now, what does that say? Something, Something about a box. Oh, Matt. Oh, Matchbox, matchbox maker. maker. Oh, gosh, I saw a show about that. Wow. The match, Matchstick Girls. Shoreditch. Yeah. So Charlie Ellis's mother was called Mary Ann. And she was a matchbox maker in the East End. Barbara has come to the Bryant and May factory in Bow, East London, to meet match girl expert Louise Raw. Louise, I found out from the uh, census 1881 that my great grandmother was Mary, I think Anne Ellis. Right. And she was a matchbox maker. Right. And she lived in Old Nickel Street. Old Nickel Street, that was part, I don't know if you know, of the Old Nickel slum, basically. No, I didn't. There, no. Yeah, it was a very poor area of London. Right, indeed. Okay, yeah. People would be living, um, one or two families, maybe in one room sometimes. No sanitation at all. Uh, lots of crime. The um, Lots of crime? Lots of crime. The Old Nickel did have a reputation as being the worst part of the East End at the time. But quite a lot of matchbox makers came from that area. Yes. And they would mostly be working from the Bryant and May factory. They'd have here at the factory um, perhaps 2,000 people oh. working. Yes. Plus an you know, unlimited number of what they called in and outers, which is what she would have been. She would have been. What the yes. girls here, yes. the matchmakers, called in yes. and outers, who'd yes. be making the boxes at home. Uh -huh. But she'd still be quite familiar with the factory. She would probably get up around five in the morning and come down here to actually pick up the paste and the boxes oh, right. and the cardboards, bring it back home. Yes. They would then spend perhaps 16 hours all day oh, making boxes and bring them back in the evening to, to pick up their money. Home working was a popular choice for many East End women as it meant the whole family could help out. But the work was relentless. Matchbox girls had to make about a thousand boxes a day in cramped and squalid surroundings. But home conditions were nothing compared to those suffered by the factory girls. Strict fines were imposed for dropping matches or having dirty feet, and the work was highly dangerous. Toxic fumes from the white phosphorus used in the matches could cause fossy jaw, a painful, disfiguring, and occasionally fatal disease. This appalling suffering in the workplace led to the Bryant and May match strike of 1888, when 1,400 women walked out, putting a halt to manufacturing for three weeks. Although there's no evidence that Mary Ann took part in the strike, the majority of in and outers 
showed solidarity by contributing to the strike fund. The match girls succeeded in changing the fine system and improving conditions. Crucially, it was the first strike by unorganized workers to gain national publicity and inspired the formation of trade unions. And these are some of the girls that went on strike then. Mm -hmm. I do love the fact they've got their hats, their hats on. They were on. famous for their hats. Even though they earned such low wages, they used to club together whatever they could afford and pay into what they called feather clubs. Feather clubs, yeah. They'd buy hats and none of your little sort of, you know, discreet jobs. They'd get the biggest hats they could <laughs> with the biggest feathers and they'd share them. They'd be communal hats. So oh, they share them? They share them. So if you had a That's date with Docker on Saturday night, and you can, can have, have a hat. You can yeah. have no, you had it last week. Oh, I love that. So yes. I love the fact that although they're dressed for grotty work, they've still got their little bit they're of glamour. Tat, Always yeah. a little bit of glamour, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And they used to also, when they were out of work, um, like to wear really high heel boots as well because they're oh, quite yeah. little a lot of them were they quite small because i'm four yeah. foot ten and a half there you so go I'd made a, i would be you'd so have been absolutely like, perfect wouldn't you yes. little lace up high heel boots i definitely would have been a match girl without i a can doubt. see it yeah i yeah. think i can see it a lot of these women probably were irish as well oh, were they? irish heritage mm. yeah Brian and May actually said to the girls own paper bizarrely enough when they were giving an interview that all our hands um hail by heritage or by birth from the Emerald Isle. So Mary Ann. Well, it's, it's yeah. entirely possible. Yes, yeah, it's, it's entirely, entirely possible. possible that there was some Irish blood in there. Okay. Yeah, quite likely, Ooh. I would say. Yeah. That will please my friend Danny LaRue. He'll oh, love really? it if I got a bit of Irish in oh, He'll love well, that. Yes, <laughs> it was interesting to learn that Mary Ann lived in the worst slum in London. I mean, the Deetses may have been in the workhouse, but the Ellises were no better off, really, were they? But I loved finding out about Mary Ann. I mean, it was a very, very hard life, but they sounded really ballsy, those ladies. I've got my granddad, Charlie Ellis's birth certificate, and I see that Mary Ann Ellis was formerly Collins. Now, we all know that Collins is an Irish name, so... I've got a feeling I've got a bit of the old Blarney in me, Irish, and I'm so thrilled. I'd love that. 